Good evening from the kitchen folks. Tonight I'm going to have a go at making a couple of hard seltzers flavoured with skinny flavour drops. So here are tonight's key ingredients. Well I've got 10 litres of spring water here. I might not need all 10 litres but I shall use most of it. I've got Lalvin ICV D47 yeast which is going to be my yeast of choice today. So hopefully this will allow me to create something that's fairly strong in terms of the alcohol by volume. I've got some Young's yeast nutrient because my yeast is going to want to feed on something other than the sugar. And speaking of sugar, well I've just got a little bit here. Uh, so this is brewing sugar dextrose monohydrate. There's going to be two kilos going into this um, but that's going to be split across two fermentation vessels and my fermentation vessels of choice today are the classic Tesco water bottle. But what's my flavour going to be? Well two classics today. So first of all I've got blue raspberry flavour like raspberry slush and pina colada flavour like the cocktail. As usual it's all a big experiment. Let's see what happens. So I've got my big pan on my weighing scales and I now need to weigh out two kilos of sugar. So I'm just going to keep going with this until I hit two kilos. So there we have it, 1,998 grams. I think we can call that two kilos. So I've got my two kilos of sugar in the pan and now need to add some spring water. So this is a five litre bottle of water. I won't add it all but I'll add probably most of it. It does dissolve fairly easily the brewing sugar. I'm using spring water incidentally because it tastes a little bit better in the end product. The tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine -y. and I'm using brewing sugar also because the yeast finds that easier to break down. It becomes less stressed and you get a cleaner end flavour than using standard household caster sugar. So the water's just filtering through, all the air bubbles are coming out. It looks a bit like global warming. I'm going to put some heat on to make it more like global warming. I don't want this to boil by any means, I just want it to warm a little bit and then the brewing sugar will just dissolve nice and easily. It's going to help it along by giving it a little bit of a stir. Looks a bit like a sorbet, in essence it kind of is. So I've just got to wait a minute for this to dissolve a bit more. So while I'm waiting for the brewing sugar to dissolve I'm now going to pour this spring water that's remaining in this bottle into these two water bottles. So I'm going to try and do it nice and evenly. That just adds a little bit of a lining to protect the bottles because these are made of plastic and I am going to be pouring some warm water into them. Now it won't be hot water but it will be warm and this bit of cold water will help them. Back to the brewing sugar and it's definitely beginning to dissolve quite a lot now. It's no more like a sorbet. It won't be too long before this goes clear. So this isn't far off being dissolved now. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit more spring water to help it on its way. I don't want it to form a saturated solution so it stops dissolving. So by adding some more I'm just speeding in the process up and I'm cooling the liquid down a little bit as well. And you can see that the colour is now beginning to go opaque and at this stage I can definitely now turn the heat off and this will now completely dissolve all on its own. So I'm just going to leave this to stand now for 10 minutes and when I come back to it this will be clear. So 10 minutes later and this is now nice and clear. So now it's time for the sugar water to get into the fermenting vessels. So nice and straightforward with a jug. I'm not going to try pouring it from the pan because it'll go everywhere. And I'm doing it downwards into the sink in case I make a mess. Just makes cleaning the fermenting vessels on the outside easier also. So the sugar is the key ingredient which the yeast will eat to create alcohol and a byproduct of that will be CO2 which is why we get bubbles in the airlock. 
This may form a Krausen on top, which is a foamy head. It doesn't always. Sometimes it's a very mild Krausen, you know, really, really thin, and sometimes it's quite hefty. I'm not expecting this to be a particularly large Krausen, to be honest. One on experience. But we'll see. Right, that's now in evenly. So now I'm going to add my yeast nutrient. So it's Young's yeast nutrient. It's a, just a general purpose yeast nutrient. It just gives the yeast a bit more to feed on because with only there being sugar in there and no fruit matter, um, it might not have a great time, but this will certainly help it. So I'm going to put two generous heaped teaspoonfuls into each one. Okay. I'm going to wash that through with a little bit of spring water. Now let's get the flavours in there. I've got no idea how much of this to add because it doesn't say on the side if you're making a hard seltzer. It says to add five drops in a, in, in a drink. So can you imagine a drink's just like a glass or a cup? It's not a particularly large thing. This is five litres. So I'm going to add a quarter of a bottle and it might mean that it's very strong flavoured but you know what when it's a hard seltzer and it's blue raspberry you want it to be strong flavoured don't you and if it's not strong enough flavoured when it comes to bottling I can always add a bit more so a quarter of each of these bottles is going to go into each one so this is the blue raspberry that's the pina colada and it's just a case of squeezing and squirting it in yeah that'll do and the same for this one. Do you know what? It smells lovely as well. This one's definitely a bit thicker and more syrupy. Right. Oh yeah. In terms of ingredients, the blue raspberry one contains flavouring, sucralose, citric acid and blue colour E133. The pina colada flavour one contains flavouring, sucralose and citric acid so no harmful preservatives in either right it's time to top up my bottles so a hard seltzer it's kind of a a newish thing it's the alcopop for the 21st century isn't it really it's basically alcoholic fizzy water that's what i'm making but with a flavor so i've filled these up a little bit too much and I'm taking a gamble that I'm not going to get much of a Krausen in doing this but I've also now got to pour some out to be able to take the original gravity. Now these are just slightly too warm still for me to take the gravity. Not hugely but I'm going to give these half an hour to cool down a little bit so I'll come back to you then. Okay these have now cooled down to 20 degrees so I'm going to take the original gravity. What I pour into the hydrometer tube which is about 100 ml I'm not going to put back in here so there's no cross-contamination. It also leaves a little bit more headspace for the Krausen. So this one is the blue raspberry. And I'm starting off on an original gravity of 1.060, 1060. Let's have a little taster and see what it's like in this form. Wow, it's lovely. It just tastes like the slush puppy. Yeah, I think this will make a really nice seltzer. It should dry out a lot with the seltzer. So the sweetness of the essence that's gone in there with the dryness of what in effect will be kind of like a whininess. It should be quite nice, I think. Let's try the pina colada. If you like pina colada. I had to sing that, didn't I? Right, let's check the gravity on this one. Hopefully it should be the same. Now this is strange and I don't know why this is. This is a lot lower. Temperature's the same. I'm not quite sure how this has happened. It's genuinely a mystery to me. Well, the gravity on this one is considerably lower. I have no idea how this has happened, but the gravity on this one is 1 1.044, 1044. Now you watch me do this together. I, I, I can't explain it. I have no idea. The temperature's the same. 
I thought they'd got the same within them, but very, very clearly different readings. I can't explain that. If anyone can offer an explanation, please do so in the comments. Anyway, let's have a little try of this one. Just like a pina colada. Really nice. Out of the two so far, I think my favourite is the blue raspberry actually. But let's see what I think when they've been fermented. So for these to be fermented, I of course need to add yeast. So I'm going to put a teaspoonful of the ICVD47 into each one, a nice rounded teaspoon. And the same in the other one. Give that a little agitation so the yeast begins to sink a little bit and doesn't all float on the top. It'll probably take a little while to get going. You can see the yeast clouds it up. So just to keep out any contaminants, I'm now going to put the airlocks in place. I will need to remove the airlocks when I eventually move these bottles because these are plastic bottles and when you pick them up they go and suck in and it'll suck the airlock water into the brew and I don't want that to happen just in case of contamination. But just for now I'm going to put the airlocks in place to keep any contaminants, airborne contaminants, out. So there's my fermentation vessels labelled up. We'll have a little update once fermentation has begun. Hey folks, quick fermentation update on my hard seltzers. So here they are and they're fermenting nicely. On the left pina colada and on the right blue raspberry. And the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that the blue raspberry is now in a glass demijohn rather than in a plastic water bottle. And that's because the plastic water bottle evidently wasn't airtight. I was getting no bubbles in the airlock. So I've swapped it over and they're both going really well. They were very slow starters. They took about three days to really pick up and get going. But then they've been nice and steady now for the past five days. So this is eight days in and it's looking good. So the next film that you see from me will be in about three weeks time when it comes to hopefully bottling, but if not bottling, clearing. Catch you then, folks. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's been 10 weeks since I've made my hard seltzer and now it's bottling day. Let's have a look at it. So as you can see, the blue raspberry has maintained a blue tinge. It's completely transparent. And the pina colada one has got a very slight yellow tinge. And again, it is also transparent. It's cleared nicely and naturally by itself. This has fermented for quite a while actually. It probably was uh, bubbling in the airlock for six weeks and then for the last month I've just had it somewhere cool so it cleared. So I've got my bottles cleaned and sanitised and I've got my plastic bungs in very hot water softening up. So let's crack on. So before I get the salsa into the bottles I need to add some sugar. This is for priming or conditioning and this will make my salsa have a sparkle. Fingers crossed. So this is standard household caster sugar and in each of these bottles I'm putting the equivalent of one and a half uh, teaspoonfuls. The yeast which is left in this will eat this sugar. It will create a very fractional fermentation and a byproduct of that will be CO2. That will create pressure and that's what gives it a sparkle. So I've got the bottles primed with the sugar it's time to get the bung out of the demijohn. I'm going to put the siphoning tube in. So just to note that I've got the tube held in place with this clip. The bottom of the tube is just into the very narrow sediment line. The first bit that comes out will be milky, but that's going to go into the hydrometer flask. Let's do it. And it's coming out nice and clear, actually. So there's 100 ml in the hydrometer flask. And now I'm into the bottles. Smells really fruity actually, so that's a good sign. Hopefully it's going to taste nice. Looks really nice and clear in the bottle.
So it's looking like I'm going to get six full bottles out of this. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that's over. And I reckon if I empty the siphoning tube and tip out what's in the hydrometer flask into there, that will be six full bottles. So before I go any further, I want to take the final gravity of this brew. Always nice when it hits the bottom. I am finishing on a final gravity of 0 0.994. So I need to work out the ABV for this brew. So I take the original gravity, which was 1.060. I deduct from that the final gravity, 0 0.994. This equals 0 0.066. And then I multiply this by 131.25 to give me a final alcohol by volume of 8.66%. Happy with that. So I'm very happy with the percentage of this. It's quite strong for a seltzer, actually. Um, so what I'm just going to do before I commit to tipping this back into the bottle, I do need to have a little taste because I need to know whether or not I need to back flavour this with more of the flavour in. It smells quite winey, but with a good fruit edge. It's incredibly sweet, actually. No, I don't need to back flavour this at all. I think if I back flavour it, it will be too overpowering. So this is going into the bottle. So there we are, six bottles of blue raspberry hard seltzer. I now need to get the bungs in place. So for each of the bottles, I need to add a plastic bung. I'm going to shove that in the top. Bash. Now, when the secondary fermentation takes place, when CO2 is created, pressure builds up, this bung will become a missile. I need to secure it in place, therefore, with a cage. So here's a cage. And I'm going to pull that over the top and then I'm going to twist it and twist it and twist it until it tightens and it locks down so that the bung cannot fly off. There. So that bottle is bunged and caged. Now I've got to do this another five times here. Then I've also got to siphon out the other one into bottles and bung and cage that. You don't need to see me do all of this all over again. So I'll come back to you when I've bottled all of the other ones and we'll look at the ABV of the other hard seltzer, the pina colada flavour. So I'll catch you in a few minutes. Okay, that's the pina colada one bottled as well. Let's take the final gravity of the pina colada alcopop, or hard seltzer, I should say. And this one has finished on 0 0.992. So it's interesting how they've both had different original and final gravities. So the Pina Colada Alcopop began on an original gravity of 1.044. I did up from that the final gravity of 0 0.992. That equals 0 0.052. And then I multiply this by 131.25, giving me a final alcohol by volume of 6.8%. Again, I'm very happy with that. So as with the blue raspberry, I need to determine whether or not I need to back flavour the pina colada hard seltzer. So cheers, folks. Not in the slightest. And it really does taste like a pina colada like incredibly like a pina colada. That's excellent. So I just need to rinse all my bottles off now because they've got sticky residue on the outside and I want to label them, but I obviously want them to be clean when I do that. Okay, that's my bottles on the sink drying off. So I've got six pina colada at the front and then behind six of the blue raspberry. I'm going to leave these to dry while I go and sort out the bottle labels. I've got my bottle labels made up in a very simple Microsoft Word template. I must print these off now. It's time to get the labels on the bottles. So I'm beginning with the pina colada. And I'm going to have to put this near the top of the bottle near the neck as the shape of the bottle 
and the texturing on the glass doesn't allow for the label to neatly place where you'd normally put it. Anyway, you don't need to watch me do every single label. I'll be back. And here's the finished article. I think they look quite nice. Welcome to the conditioning room, folks. This is where my hard seltzers are going to spend the next month. So here they are, along with some friends. And these are what I call my conditioning shelves. And these are shelves that have got a little thermometer down there, the little metal thing sticking out just there, connected to a thermostat plug. When the temperature drops below 19.5, the plug is activated and it turns that heater on at the back of the shelves. When it gets to 20.5, it turns off. It's currently on 20.3 down there. So these will remain there for the next month before I open and taste them and that will be the next film. So catch you then. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my hard seltzers opening night, the grand opening night and we're going to begin with pina colada and this is going to be a lovely drink for today. It's 20 degrees celsius outside, baking sunshine and it's actually the night of Eurovision Song Contest so that's what we'll be toasting hopefully a UK up there result with. I don't know if we'll win or not. Do you know what? I don't really care whether we win or not. It's just a bit of fun isn't it? Just like brewing. Right, so you can see very well that it's clear. I don't need to tell you that it's clear. Um, it's been standing and conditioning for one month uh, and I've had it chilling all day in the fridge. So um, I'm fairly confident it's going to have carved because I can see that the bung has slightly raised. What will I get? Ooh, I'll get a very stiff cork. Right, need to resort to the tea towel. When you can't open it, right, hold the bung steady and twist the bottle rather than the bung. Am I going to get a pop? Well, that was a bit pathetic, wasn't it? That was jolly pathetic. I don't even know if this is carved. Oh, it has carved. Oh, yeah. Oof. I was beginning to worry then. I've got no doubt at all that that's a fizzy drink. It smells very alcoholic, but not apparently a pina colada smell. Oh yeah, I've got the coconut now, but you've really got to get your nose in there to get that. Let's see what it tastes like. Wow, that's sweet. Ooh! Gosh, that really is like pina colada. It's a bit like... Um, Malibu and lemonade, but maybe a diet lemonade, so it's not got that massive sweetness. It is like alcoholic fizzy water that tastes like pina colada. That is exactly what it tastes like, you know. So I've, I've, bre I've brewed a hard seltzer. That's what I've set out to achieve. I believe that's what I've got. It's a nice enough summer drink. Not something I would drink every single day, but certainly not something that's offensive either. So I'm going to enjoy this one. Cheers, folks. Hey folks, back again, hard seltzer number two, the blue raspberry flavour. This is the stronger one at 8.7%. So having sat outside and had a drink of the other one uh, with the missus, we've decided that it tastes like Malibu and soda water, which you know what, is not a million miles away really from what it actually is in terms of the flavour. So winner really, it works. Sickly if you drink too much, but certainly between two people a bottle of it's fine. Not every day though. Right, so blue raspberry, am I going to get a pop? Same problem with the bung. Twist the bottle. There we go. Oh, a bit pathetic, but there's vapour. Right, so am I going to get any kind? Oh yeah, yeah, that's carved. You can see that. Lovely. Really well carved. Interesting smell. I don't really know what a blue raspberry smells like. Wow, definitely fizzier on the tongue than the other one. And a nicer flavour. That is actually quite lovely. I wasn't expecting to like this one. I thought it might taste artificial and plasticky, but it's actually very nice. 
So out of the two, the blue raspberry is definitely my favourite, but the hard seltzer recipe has worked. It's dead easy. It's easier than a turbo cider. It's a sugar wash with some flavouring in there. It doesn't get any easier than that. Go try it for yourself. Anyway, cheers folks. I'm going to enjoy this and hopefully going to see a good result in the Eurovision tonight. And I'll catch you on the next broom. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.